Uh, yesterday, we brought you the news that the chief prosecutor at the International Criminal Court is seeking the arrest for potential war crimes, not, not just of the leadership of the terror group Hamas, but also of the Israeli leadership, specifically the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Defence Minister Yoav Gallant. Well, today the fallout from that decision continues. In this country, our political leaders have been giving their reaction to the ICC chief prosecutor's decision on this. And quite unusually, the two main parties in Westminster have taken very different views on the legitimacy and the validity of what the ICC is doing. Here, first up is Rishi Sunak's verdict. Well, this is a deeply unhelpful development. Of course, it's still subject to a final decision, but it remains deeply unhelpful nonetheless. There is no moral equivalence between a democratic state exercising its lawful right to self-defence and the terrorist group Hamas. And it's wrong to conflate and, and uh, as I said, equivocate between those two different entities. Uh, and what I'm very clear is that this will make absolutely no difference in getting a pause in the fighting, getting getting aid into the region or indeed the hostages out. David Lammy, meanwhile, the Shadow Foreign Secretary, of course, for Labour, getting some stick today simply for saying this, that Labour's position is the decision by the ICC's chief prosecutor to apply for arrest, arrest warrants is an independent matter for the court and the prosecutor. Isn't that the sensible position on this? Isn't that the sensible response? For Rishi Sunak to come out and call it deeply unhelpful for the International Criminal Court to investigate war crimes, to suggest that it's somehow not important because it won't get aid into Gaza. What message is that sending? Is the Prime Minister of this country really suggesting that basically potential war crimes don't matter? That investigating them is just a distraction from far more important things? Joe Biden, meanwhile, says the ICC decision is outrageous. This is the UK and the US. These are the countries that claim to uphold international law, to uphold liberal values when it comes to the international community. Only last week, the US State Department said it believed that international law might have been broken by Israel in Gaza. But when the ICC, the court charged with investigating this stuff, says the same, it's outrageous, according to the US president, and deeply unhelpful, according to the British prime minister. I do wonder the next time the UK and the US try to call out human rights abuses by the likes of China and Russia, aren't we going to have less credibility in doing that when our own prime minister has said investigations into war crimes by our allies is deeply unhelpful? It's, it's the first time in quite a while when it comes to this issue that you've seen such a gulf between the government and the opposition, isn't it, when it, when it on the, in terms of the British political reaction? Afternoon. It, it is unusual, yes. Uh, I mean, I think that it's interesting the note that David Lammy has struck in which he hasn't said whether he thinks it's helpful or unhelpful or, or you know, made any uh, judgment on the validity of, of the, uh, you know, the, the fact that the chief prosecutor is seeking these arrest warrants. He simply said it is an independent decision. I think departing from that is problematic for Britain. We've always been very strong supporters of the ICC and we often often claim to play a sort of key convening role in the world in international justice. Uh, British lawyers and researchers have been an enormous part of helping the Ukrainians collect some of the evidence against uh, Vladimir Putin and against the Russian invasion. And uh, that was very recently, only last year, that we loudly applauded uh, the issuance of, a, of a, an arrest warrant for Vladimir Putin. So, yeah, I mean, this is, it's not without precedent. I don't know if you recall that when uh, the, the ICC first claimed its jurisdiction over uh, the area on the basis that Palestine was a proto-state, mm -hmm. uh, Boris Johnson weighed in with a letter to the Conservative Friends of Israel saying that he would do his best to block it. And that was just before Karim Khan, the chief prosecutor, uh, joined the, the, the leadership of the ICC. And of course, he's British. So I think that was an attempt at that point to put the um, uh, to put a finger on the scale, which Khan has uh, <laughs> has not taken up. Because of course he could, the Rishi Sunak could have come out and said, "We are confident Israel hadn't committed war crimes, but it's appropriate for the ICC to investigate." The fact that they are potential warren, I mean, it's not a great endorsement of what the UK government believes Israel has done, is it, Catherine? If they were, a lot of no, people would indeed, say, "If you've got nothing no, to no, hide, that's... what's the problem?" 
excellent point. And of course, um, there may be a reason why Rishi Sunak cannot say that he is confident Israel hasn't um, committed war crimes because he uh, and his government, or rather the foreign secretary, are probably currently in receipt of legal advice about that. And we have not seen it. It will not be disclosed. Mm. So uh, he can't say it if he has advice to the country. And we, of course, have heard Lord Cameron several times say that this is a concern of his, that you know, Israel may be in breach. So I, I no, I mean, I don't think that anyone can say that with any um, confidence. And I think that it's very interesting that a lot of the criticism, including from Michael Gove and Rishi Sunak, mm-hmm. has uh, focused on this notion that there was some sort of equivalence being drawn between Israel and Hamas, when in fact, it, it, that is not the case. They each have their different, you know, charge sheet against them, the three mm-hmm. Hamas leaders and uh, Netanyahu and Gallant. So there was no attempt to put them on some sort of moral equivalent. That, you know, this is just this is what happens when you follow the evidence. You don't have a choice to you know charge one side and not the other if you if you have found the evidence of of uh, crimes against humanity which are serious. Is Rishi Sunak right to hit out at the ICC decision? Is Michael Gove right to say? that anti-Israel protests here are, in fact, too often anti-Semitic? Or, in your view, are both of those statements another sign, you might think, that our government is getting its response to this issue badly wrong? Michael Gove's big speech on anti-Semitism, I mean, it, it is undeniably a problem that has reared its head in a, on an enormous scale in the last six months or so. Good evening, Ben. Thanks for having me. Of course, as Michael Gove set out very clearly in his speech, he not only spoke about how anti-Semitism has skyrocketed since October 7th, there being more anti-Semitic incidents between October 7th and December 31st last year than in any calendar year ever recorded before. But he also was able to go into detail as to how this virus, which infects our society, has mutated over a thousand years. It's something that we have seen in Europe and across the world um, in many forms over the last thousand years, and it has very much mutated into a modern form. We speak about the Holocaust and the events uh, that happened in the early 20th, the first half of the 20th century, but here we are today in the 21st century and we're still speaking about anti-Semitism. Mm. He's talked a lot today about the the, and the pro-Palestine anti-Israel demonstrations, suggesting that the, the organisers, at the very least, aren't doing enough to prevent and root out anti-Semitism. Is he right on that? I, I think he's, he's hit the nail on the head here. It's, there are many people who are going on those marches who I'm sure are acting out of genuine feelings towards what is happening, and that is perfectly legitimate, and they should... Um, they should be able to express their voice, but they should be questioning themselves when they look to the side and they see they are marching with people who are chanting things about the destruction of the world only Jewish state isn't when that, they are holding signs. Isn't that uh, guilt which, by association? I hear what you're saying, of course I do, and some awful things well, you have been said, about said, but isn't that guilt by association? Well, the organisers of these marches now have seen this on a weekly basis whenever they've organised it, and they are yet to do anything to to separate themselves from this, to show that they are not condoning this. Um, Because at the moment, what they're doing is facilitating it. They're giving these people the ability to come to London and to show this hatred on the streets. And they're not saying, you're not welcome here. Don't come. It's very easy to do. I don't understand quite why they haven't done it. And you have to question why. And the the encampments, Michael, at the universities we've seen, Michael Gove also touching on those. Do you see anti-Semitism in in some of the student protests we've seen in this country as well, Russell? Yes, I uh, was with a a meeting yesterday with some of our Jewish student leaders, and it's really difficult to hear. Uh, Jewish students who are being intimidated um, feel that they cannot bring their true identity with them to university for fear that they're going to be intimidated. We're we're going to, or worse, attacked, which has, there have been instances. And we see this in the encampments. There's that visual um, obstacle there that many Jewish students will find um, intimidatory. But these things have consequences. We have a chaplain, a Jewish chaplain, a rabbi at Leeds University who currently cannot go onto campus. He is unable to do his job and support the welfare of Jewish students because it is not safe for him to go onto campus. These are serious issues that are affecting our society. 
what can the government do? Uh, Michael Gove's talking about the problem. Do you feel the government is doing enough? Are the authority, the police and the Metropolitan Police doing enough to actually clamp down on, on this stuff when it does happen? Just lastly. <laughs> We are, we are seeing action when anti-Semitism takes place. Unfortunately, a lot of what the government has been doing uh, has been to have to support the Jewish community with, with practical means, security for our locations. And that is very much appreciated. And it's something um, that the Jewish community appreciates coming from the government. So much, only so much is going to be done top down from government. Though mm. this is a question that we have to answer ourselves as a British society. What does this mean for us as a country that we have allowed anti-Semitism to take off um, in our society? And well, let's go back to October seventh for a second. When October seventh happened, my initial reaction was to worry about my family out in Israel. Mm. My second reaction was to think about what the reaction is going to be here in the UK in terms of that rise of hatred, because unfortunately. It was there wasn't a question mark there. We knew it was going to happen. We've seen it happen. And the question we need to be asking ourselves now is when there is inevitably another conflict in the future, mm. what are we going to do between now and then so that I don't have that feeling again? Because otherwise, we haven't made any progress.